Lambert-Eaton-Myasthenic Syndrome is an autoimmune condition affecting the neuromuscular junction, particularly targeting voltage-gated calcium channels. Myasthenic stands for muscle weakness. The neuromuscular junction is the interface between the nervous system and muscle fibres. It is a chemical synapse where nervous signals are transmitted into the muscle fibres, triggering contraction. The end of the nerve, the presynaptic membrane, releases neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft, most notably acetylcholine. This then moves across the synaptic cleft and binds to acetylcholine receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, that is, the muscle, and triggers a cascade that results in muscle contraction. In normal circumstances, as the action potential reaches the end of the presynaptic membrane, voltage-gated calcium channels are depolarized and open, resulting in an influx of calcium. This calcium allows acetylcholine-containing vesicles to bind to the presynaptic membrane and be released into the synaptic cleft. In Lambert-Eaton syndrome, there are autoantibodies targeting the voltage-gated calcium channels meaning a lack of calcium coming in, and so a lack of acetylcholine being released and binding the acetylcholine receptors. It commonly features a gradual onset of fatigue, muscle weakness that is mostly the proximal muscles such as the hip or thigh, and this often features an improvement after exercise as multiple impulses are delivered, leading to enough acetylcholine being released. Reflexes are often reduced or absent and will also improve with exercise. The weakness can also be present in the upper limbs, but this tends to be a later manifestation. Dysarthria, meaning speech disturbance like slow or slurred speech, is present in up to 71% of cases, and diplopia, that is double vision or ptosis, can also be present, as can dysphagia meaning difficulty swallowing. These symptoms are similar to those seen in myasthenia gravis. However, in Lambert-Eaton syndrome, autonomic changes are also common, which help distinguish it from myasthenia gravis. Examples include xerostomia, meaning a dry mouth, present in roughly 78% of cases, and dilated, poorly reactive pupils. Other examples include orthostatic hypotension and impotence in males. It is possible to have dyspnea if the respiratory muscles or bulbar system are impacted. Trauma, including surgery, infections and medications, including antibiotics like macrolides, aminoglycosides and fluoroquinolones, can provoke weakness, but this is more common in myasthenia gravis. It is divided into two main groups, cancer-associated Lambert-Eaton syndrome, which is a paraneoplastic form most commonly associated with small cell lung cancer, but can also be associated with lymphoproliferative conditions. Around 50% of patients with Lambert-Eaton syndrome either have cancer or go on to develop it. It is thought that voltage-gated calcium channels are found in higher concentrations in small cell lung cancer, which may be why autoantibodies are induced. The second type is non-cancer associated, where instead it is a more general autoimmune state, with 27% of those patients also having another autoimmune condition, most commonly involving the thyroid. Non-cancer associated seems to be linked to human leukocyte antigen or HLA types, B8, A1, and DR3 in particular. The cancer-associated form is more common in males, with median onset of 60 years, while the non-cancer-associated form seems to be more common in females when younger than 45, and in males when above 60. The diagnosis is made on a combination of the history and physical exam, as well as electrophysiology and serological testing. Physical examination may show signs such as areflexia, which improves with contraction, as well as evidence of autonomic dysfunction, such as poorly reactive pupils and orthostatic hypotension. 
Electrophysiology includes nerve conduction studies, the initial amplitude of motor but not sensory units is lower, but facilitation can be seen after exercise. Repetitive nerve stimulation is also used, where a nerve is repeatedly stimulated and the muscle response is measured. Classically, low frequency testing shows a decremental response, while high frequency testing gives an incremental response. This also helps distinguish Lambert-Eaton syndrome from myasthenia gravis. Single fibre electromyography involves inserting a needle with electrode and stimulating one or two individual muscle fibres. This tends to show jitter and block that improves with higher firing rates. 75 to 95% of patients are positive for voltage gated calcium channel antibodies, though acetylcholine or muscle specific tyrosine kinase antibodies may also be checked if myasthenia gravis is suspected. Thyroid stimulating hormone is also assessed with bloods, as thyroid disturbance may indicate another autoimmune condition. Due to the link with malignancy, a CT scan is often done to investigate, followed at times by other studies like MRI scan or PET scan. A score known as the Dutch-English Lambert-Eaton syndrome tumor association prediction score, Delta P, features variables such as age at diagnosis and smoking history to stratify the small cell lung cancer risk and help determine the screening strategies. Treatment is focused not only on reducing symptoms, but also addressing the underlying cancer in associated cases. Symptom improvement is mostly achieved by improving presynaptic acetylcholine release, done by using agents such as 3,4-diaminopyridine, also known as amifampridine, as the first-line agent. This causes a prolongation in the action potential duration by blocking presynaptic potassium channels, allowing for calcium channels to remain open longer and as such more calcium influx. This, however, is contraindicated in patients who suffer seizures. Guanidine is another option, however this carries potential renal toxicity, and acetylcholinesterase inhibitors like pyridostigmine, which is the first-line agent in myasthenia gravis, can be used, though in Lambert-Eaton syndrome the effects are not as apparent. Immunomodulating agents can be considered if symptomatic treatments are ineffective including intravenous immunoglobulins, corticosteroids and immunosuppressants like azathioprine and cyclosporin, and rituximab may be an option as it is an anti-CD20 cell antibody. It can be particularly beneficial in B lymphocyte disorders.